Kenneth McCallion drops by and shares with us the the things that the Mueller investigation may have missed. I mean, the situation's even worse than you thought. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, and subscribe to our channel. Um, but it goes deeper than that, the rot that's happening in this administration. Kenneth McCallion is with us. He's an attorney. Uh, not just an attorney, by the way. He heads an accomplished team of civil, civil litigation and human rights attorneys. He's a nationally recognized expert on constitutional law. He has significant expertise as a former federal prosecutor in the fields of civil RICO, criminal law, history of treason and espionage in the United States. He, uh, he worked in investigations dealing with labor racketeering involving the construction of Trump Tower. And, uh, you know, so this, he's been around and he's the author of uh, an extraordinary new book titled Treason and Betrayal, The Rise and Fall of Individual One. And his uh, website, McCallionLaw, M-C-C-A-L-L-I-O-N-Law.com. And uh, it's also the Twitter handle, McCallionLaw. And uh, uh, Kenneth, welcome to the program. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. So uh, treason and betrayal, What the argument that you're making at least from what I got from what I have read of your book, and, and we featured it as one of our book reports, in fact, on our show here um, over the last few days, is that there's plenty to impeach Trump on right now, or for that matter, to indict Trump on right now, in the public record. We don't even need the Ken, or Ken Star. We don't even need the uh, Bob Mueller report. Am I, do I have that right? Uh, yes, that's uh, ab absolutely true. The uh, public reporting which has been excellent by many media outlets, uh, has put together a body of, of evidence which was available to Mueller, but whether he chose or not to rely upon it, I guess we'll, we'll find out. But just in that public realm, there's a significant um, lodestar of, of evidence, uh, either for uh, an indictment, impeachment, uh, or um, certainly uh, it adds up to a fundamental betrayal of President Trump, of his obligations uh, under law to act in the best interests of the United States and not that of Can a you give me a few examples, power. Kenneth? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, one critical period was uh, during the transition uh, when the Obama administration was imposing sanctions, additional sanctions on Russia for uh, what our 17 intelligence services said was a uh, concerted, well-planned cyber attack and disinformation campaign on our democratic system. With the goal of At getting Trump time, elected, by the way. <clears throat> uh, yeah, absolutely. To undercut the... Uh, undercut the Clinton campaign and to ultimately to get Trump elected. Um, on the day after, I think it was December 29th, um, 2016, during the transition, uh, right after President Obama and his administration imposed sanctions and everyone was waiting for retaliation by the Russians, uh, Trump and uh, some of his other staff down in Mar-a-Lago had uh, Michael Flynn call Ambassador, Russian Ambassador Kislyak and say, look, don't worry about the sanctions. We're going to take care of them. Uh, when we're in office, you can rely upon us. So what, um, what the Trump administration was doing was directly undercutting uh, the current administration, and it was providing aid and comfort really to the Russians, as Trump did uh, all, all along the way. Right. So your opinion is that, 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 that singular act was treasonous in and of itself and therefore, thereby, uh, therefore worthy of prosecution or at least impeachment? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. And it started uh, early on with the campaign. Uh, Trump, uh, Trump was having a number of his surrogates, about six, seven or eight, of his key insiders, uh, including Paul Manafort uh, and others, not only dealing with Ambassador Kislyak, uh, but with uh, with other Russian proxies and intermediaries, in order to really get what Trump publicly announced uh, really was dirt on Hillary Clinton, and to get an inside track on illegally seized information.
information. Okay. And uh, it, it really started with the campaign, and it's continued up to the present time. Vicki Ward has done a brilliant job of documenting her book, Kushner, Inc., and of documenting how, um, you know, Kushner needed to borrow a billion dollars because his building was going down in flames. Uh, he organized this thing with, with Trump and, and Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Um, he, was, he went to Qatar first and tried to get the money from them. Uh, they turned him down. Then he supported, uh, Kushner and Trump supported this, this uh, uh, blockade against uh, Qatar. And then as soon as Qatar, uh, uh, an investment fund that Qatar owns a majority in, loaned the billion dollars or gave the billion dollars to Jared Kushner, um, suddenly, you know, ev all, everything's good again. Are there similar connections between Donald Trump and the Trump campaign and countries other than Russia that we should be looking at. Uh, you know, he's been very, very tight with Netanyahu, uh, uh, you know, basically messing in the elections of both Israel and the United States, both of them. Um, he's been very tight with the Saudis. Uh, you know, Trump has been. It was the first country he went to. Um, and the Saudis are engaged in this vicious war with Yemen. Um, there, there may be other countries. I, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, what's going on with China, what's going on with North Korea. Are, are there other areas that we should be worried about, Kenneth, in your experience? Well, well, absolutely. I mean, the White House uh, has been up for sale, and it's being marketed not only by Trump, but as Kushner, as you've indicated, he established a close working relationship with the Saudis uh, and persuaded his father-in-law, didn't take much persuading, I think, to to look the other way when they when they murderously killed a journalist, Khashoggi, and um, they meddled in Middle Eastern politics even during the Obama administration with Qatar, as you mentioned. So there are a number of autocratic um, regimes around the world that uh, Trump, um, Kushner, and the others in the inside Trump circle seem to have an affinity for as opposed to Western democratic powers who have been our traditional allies. All right. Let's, let's talk about Michael Cohen for a moment. You, you uh, have noted that Representative Goetz, the, uh, the, the Republican who uh, was uh, tweeting hate basically at Michael Cohen, should be uh, prosecuted for threatening a witness. And, and you've done a deep dive into Cohen's legal testimony. And, and um, uh, correct me if I'm not characterizing this correct, accurately, but uh, it seems to me that you're of the opinion that Cohen's testimony in and of itself was um, something that could be used to indict Donald Trump, that it pointed to a number of larger crimes that, you know, explicitly, that, that don't even necessarily require more investigation. And uh, that, you know, we really need to take action right away, that waiting until the 2020 elections is too, too long and too late. T t fill, that, fill that picture in for us. No, no, absolutely. The um, subtitle of my book is Rise and Fall of Individual One. I get that term because it has been used in uh, several indictments, uh, particularly that of Michael Cohen to describe the president. Individual One is a unindicted co-conspirator in the Michael Cohen uh, indictments in the Southern District, particularly those relating to the payoffs of, uh, of the porn star and uh, various payments made immediately before the election to prevent uh, those young ladies from going public with, with their stories. Right. In addition, uh, there's substantial evidence that when Michael Cohen, as he's testified himself, when he went, first went before Congress and lied about uh, whether Trump had a continuing dialogue and contacts with the Russians over the Trump Tower deal during during the campaign, that, um, as Michael Cohen says, um, Donald Trump, like the head of an organized crime family, won't give explicit word-for-word -word instructions that to lie to Congress, for example, but will let it be known through code words, etc., that uh, that he wants uh, Michael Cohen to lie, and Michael Cohen was a willing liar and, and is paying the price for it. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable stuff, and it's a great book, Treason and Betrayal, The Rise and Fall of Individual One by Kenneth, F., Kenneth Ford McCallion.